What is up, Flutter devs? Today we're going to do a Philo Taxis coding challenge with Flutter processing. What is Philo Taxis? It's the way that leaves are arranged around a stem on a plant, perhaps used more generally. It is the kind of geometric organization in how plants develop, uh, a basis for a lot of interesting visualizations that you might create. Now, today we are recreating what Dan over at the coding train created in, let's see, coding challenge number 30. So that's the specific layout that we're going to use. We're just going to kind of replicate his math here and see what we get in terms of a visualization. Uh, and then you might be interested in exploring more of what Philo Taxis has to offer. So let's go get into it. Here we are with a blank sketch ready to go, 400 by 400, and it's up to us what we're going to draw. Our goal here is to draw dots in a particular pattern that has a kind of floral geometry to it. Okay, that, That's what this exercise is about. And we want that geometry to be based around the center of the sketch. Therefore, in our draw method, the first thing we're going to do after painting the background is we're going to translate to an X position of width over two and a Y position of height over two. And now our drawing commands will take place from the center of the sketch. Now um, we are going, so we are going to kind of iterate on stages of drawing. We're going to draw a few circles, then a few more, then a few more. And to track this, we're going to have a variable that we're just going to call N. Also, we want some constants here for our drawing. We want a dot radius. I said we're drawing a bunch of dots, right? The radius is going to be three. We also want a dot distance multiplier. If we're drawing circles out from the center, then as we, how far apart do we want those dots over time? That's what this multiplier is going to determine. We're going to set that to six. It, I chose that empirically. It works out pretty well. We can also play with that as an adjustment later because it's a constant. And I guess both of these can be, actually all of these can be private. <clears throat> what are we actually going to draw here? Well, we're going to start by looping from 0 to n. So n is going to control the number of dots that we draw. And we then want to calculate an angle. Part of this floral geometry involves, you know, choose, we're, we're drawing out from the center. So we're working in a kind of almost a polar coordinate space. We need to choose, okay, what direction from the center do we want to go? That angle, we're going to say I times, and we, we want 137.5 degrees. That number, I, I think, came from Dan's work. But we want it in radians. So we have to divide by 360 and then multiply by 2 times pi, and that's going to be our angle. We also want a radius, how far from the center, and this is where that dot distance multiplier comes in, and we're going to multiply by the square root of i. And we need to then turn those two values into xy coordinates for this dot. So the x will be radius times the cosine of the angle, and y will be radius times the sine of the angle, this is standard trigonometry 101. And then we will say, we will set, for now, we're going to set the fill color to white all the time. We'll look at something more interesting in a moment. We're not going to stroke any of the circles. And then we're going to draw this circle at offset x comma y. And radius dot radius times 2 is the diameter. Then after this loop, we're going to increase n by 5. We're going to add 5 more dots. And just to avoid um, creating an unbounded number, I'm going to clamp n. I'm going to say that n cannot be greater than 2,000. Let's see what this gives us. All right, so you see all these dots. And we have a, you'll notice an interesting pattern here at the center. 
And then you'll also notice that it, it looks like the pattern changes the further out that we go. In the center, we see a bunch of these radial, um, I'm not sure what to call them really, but these kind of spirals that are all intersecting each other. So we have this kind of complex geometry here in the center. But the further out that we go, the more separated these spirals become. They're no longer interfering with each other. And so out here on the exterior, we can kind of see individual spiral strands. And yet down here, we can kind of see, like, so up here in the upper left, we just kind of have one motion that kind of follows my cursor here, initially to the right or to the left and then up. But down here in the lower left, we're seeing like a convergence of two different directions in two different spirals into one. Uh, so this, this kind of intricate geometry comes from just this very simple uh, angle and radius math here. I think Dan referenced an entire book on this topic, so you can find probably all the different formulas you want for all sorts of different nature-based patterns and geometries. This is just an example of one of them. Let's go ahead and make this a little more interesting, though, though. Down here in the fill color, let's use an HSV color. Let's go with 100% alpha saturation, 100% brightness, 100%. And then the hue is where we're going to get interesting. Let's calculate a hue, which is equal to I divided by 3 mod 360. And again, I think I got that from Dan. Uh, so I, I don't know what the basis is for that calculation, but we're going to take the index of the individual dot. We're going to divide it by three. And then because a hue, a hue comes from a color wheel. So a hue is always between zero degrees and 360 degrees. So we have to modulus by 360. And then we pass in the hue. Let's see what this gives us. All right, now you can see we got this really cool outward gradient. I'm, I'm sure you can think of all sorts of different ways to assign colors. Here we've essentially assigned color by the distance. There's a little bit of expansion and, or spiraling of the color, but mostly it just looks like rings because the strongest relationship that we have here, apparently dividing I by three, is mostly just giving us a distance value. Let's see if we divide it by, I don't know, something like one half. I'm not even sure how to characterize those colors. Uh, some areas of color seem like they spiral. Once you get out here on the exterior, it's, it's almost like Christmas lights going out from the center. Let's go something higher at, uh, let's say, 20. Kind of just a much slower gradient. Now there's not such a clear banding between colors. Let's go 10. And I'll take it back to 3. And there's still one more interesting thing that we can do based on uh, Dan's work, which is not only do we generate more circles every single frame, but we can also alter the a base angle on every single frame so that it animates, it appears to animate while it's growing. We're going to come up before this loop and we're going to say base angle equals n times 0 0.3. And down here where we set the angle, we have this part here is essentially constant. That calculation runs the same way. That's, that's what gives us the angles we see on the right. It gives us a very stable growth, like once a dot is plotted, the dot is always in the same place. But if we add the base angle, the base angle changes every single frame because N changes every single frame, which means every dot actually moves a little bit on every single frame. And let's see what this gives us. Check that out. Now we're we're spinning one direction while we're kind of spiraling the other. And now we have a pretty cool animation. Now we have some like kaleidoscope stuff going on here. 
So that's all I wanted to show you. Uh, I think that's pretty much what Dan did in, uh, in his exercise as well. What we're dealing with here is one, we have phylotaxis, which is coming up with formulas to represent geometry in nature, and then we're using them in processing. And two, we are assigning colors in an interesting way. You can use any formula you want, but by having a kind of algorithm for choosing colors, you can create some really interesting looking patterns and effects. And we've brought those two things together in this exercise. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Go check out Dan's work, of course, as always. Uh, go check out that book that Dan references that talk that looks at the geometry of nature. Uh, and with that, I will see you in the next video.